it. I can't believe we're hooked up because I kept thinking, I don't know if that's going to work. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Whoever's on, thank you for being with us tonight. Um, thank you to Andrew. Thank you to Chasing Galleries. Thank you to Andrew and Mark and Jeff and Rachel and all the staff. Um, I've been with Andrew for many, many years. We started out together in New Jersey at Chasing Portfolio. And uh, we were selling to designers and to corporations and, and things like that. And uh, he opened his first gallery in Sarasota. We had beautiful openings there, gorgeous gallery on Palm Avenue. Uh, from there up to Richmond. Um, two galleries in Richmond. Jeff is now the manager there, uh, doing a wonderful job, it's a beautiful gallery in Richmond. And now back in Sarasota in South Village um, where we've had openings there too and uh, many, many wonderful nights and wonderful times. So all good. And Rick is laughing, so something's going on and I don't know what it is. I got a short message from Krista Naylor who said, hi, Nanny. Oh. <laughs> and you, and you have hellos from Sue Ionello, Jim Rauner, oh. Lisa Rott, okay. uh, Rosemary Lillis so far. I've been with forever and he got roped into this job so um doing a fine job i think and yuri stanton just said, said hello yuri. Oh, hi, <laughs> yuri. okay so the first thing i'm going to talk about rick went, went around the studio a little bit and he was um just very quietly walking around and you saw a little bit of it um i am in the part that we have kind of finished off and um it's kind of an arcade man cave the big TV, and uh, we are actually in the basement um, of our townhouse. We bought it about 15 years ago, and um, uh, when I saw it, we had it built, and when I saw it was going to be, I said, yes, that's the that's the studio for me, for sure. Um, it's got 10-foot ceilings. We When we had it finished off, we did not put a um, ceiling, a drop ceiling down. Uh, when I'm holding a large canvas, I'm able to turn it around and move around without hitting anything. So that's pretty nice. Um, we do have color, we, we decided this together. Um, we do have color, color corrected lighting. So sometimes when uh, you're looking at a painting on the computer, um, the colors are maybe a little bit off. But down here, when I'm painting that painting, I know the colors are true. Because, the, because of the lights. Um, back here in the back of the studio, back here in the back of the studio, <laughs> bear with us, it's okay, bear with us. I also wanted to say that Connie Clock, my old college okay. classmate, Sue Cook just got on, and several others. Okay, the, um, the back of the uh, studio is where I look out. So uh, obviously it's at night here, because so we can't see. We can't see any there, anything there, but I look out over the mountains. Our backyard looks out over the mountains. It's a great, a great uh, space. So the first thing I think I want to try to do for you guys out there is um, I'm going to show you a little bit of my process. Um, I'm going to go. I'm going to go around to the paintings that are on the wall, but I thought first it would be um, fun to see uh, what takes place down here. So. Um, this is my painting table. I cover it with um, brown paper because after I've used it a lot, it looks like this. <laughs> so uh, after a while, there are too many bumps and, and, and ridges on it uh, just from the paint. So I'm not able to sit down and possibly write something. It's got to be smooth again. Um, also protects the table, which has been around for a long time. Um, I actually tear apart some of these um, pieces and a lot of them end up in my paintings. So along with those pieces, um, the first thing I do, you're looking actually upside down, so let me, I started a painting so you can give it a, a look here. So the first thing I do is the collages, um, showing you some of the pieces that um, some of the, the paper I've made, uh, some of the paper, this is all handmade paper, um, all of these I've made, I'm going to show you that in a minute. Um, there are pieces of uh, studies from Canvas 
um, that I cut up and um, used in different parts um, of the painting also. So that, that piece of canvas actually gets adhered down to the, to the uh, canvas that I'm working on. Um, didn't even probably have to mention that when preparing a, a painting, you've got to start with the canvas itself. So there's a piece of canvas, there's the stretchers that have to be put apart, the whole thing has to be put together. So um, the collage pieces first, walk with me over here to the other table and I'm going to show you how some of that hand, handmade paper comes about. Um, I have a vat here of water. In the vat is cotton linters. Okay, so it's, it's cotton in pieces. It goes into a blender with water. And um, so these, these pieces that are more white are the cotton linters. So in, in with those, I put a lot of everything. So I put a lot of um, uh, threads and uh, different metallics. Um, there's uh, some, whoops, there's some um, uh, iridescent paper in there. Okay, so if you're making a sheet of paper, you use a form like this. Um, I wouldn't normally, if I'm making a sheet, I wouldn't normally have all these pieces in there. I would just mostly have the linters and some decorative uh, elements. But the, it goes in like this just to give you an idea. So it would not be all this stuff, sorry guys. But what's here gets pushed down like this and a full sheet would fill up. So it'd be something like this or like this. This has a lot of a uh, lot of kind of glittery pieces of thread in it. Okay, and then for the pieces that are more, um, I'll show you back in the painting. Pieces that have more texture, I do it this way. Um, the Art Center in New Jersey held a fabulous workshop um, in in paper making, which I took many times with a group of uh, fabulous artists. So so here. This picks these up. I go like this through my hands, and then I can shape it. I take the water out, and I can shape it into a piece. Usually, it's an elongated piece because my paintings are uh, landscapes, and that piece becomes part of usually somewhere in the horizon, which I'll show you when we go back. So the piece is like this. It goes. It'll go down on the table. It takes a couple days to dry. And then I'll have a selection of those. Um, a lot of times I will take a piece that I've done as a uh, screen and um, I'll break it into a size that I like. And I can take um, gold metallic paint around the edges. Um, you might see that I think I see that have it in a painting over there. Um, and the gold oxidizes and turns this beautiful gold and then green. Um, I love the way that looks. So. That's um, a possibility with that. So I'm going to go back to my table and I'm going to show you the next step. So the next step after the collage is molding paste, which gives a texture. Rick, Rick I think they can see if we kind of do this. It gives a texture to the surface of the painting. Good close up. <laughs> okay. That's good. Um, so that goes on, that has to dry overnight. After that goes on, metal leaf sizing, which looks like this, looks like actually this in the container. By the way, any artists out there, um, Talenti Sorbet container makes a great thing. You can put paints and everything else in it. So just remember that, okay. So, what I did was I have sizing. This has already been done, obviously, the gold leaf and the silver leaf. And I got the sizing up over the top that has now has been, is sticky. Usually it takes, a, nah, it takes about 45 minutes or so to really get sticky. It's brushed on with a brush. So the gold leaf, this is very fun. Show the stickiness of it. Show it's sticky. I missed it. I was down there. What am I doing? Just show how it's sticky again. Oh, I'm showing how it's sticky again. Thanks, Rick. <laughs> okay, so the gold leaf, I actually can almost paint with it, which is really fun. You see how um, 
almost friable. Is that the word? Um, it's really, really thin. But um, I will add pieces that kind of go toward the edges and break up the space. Um, it probably looks to you like it should, that this is going to be some cloud formations. And the, um, the gold will interact uh, and, and kind of be there alongside the, um, the silver. I'm just putting the gold on. I think there's a few pieces down here that I would add it on. Um, and over here. I mean, there's a lot of different techniques. If I take a very large piece and put it down exactly, it's going to have a different look than if, if I have the little crumbs, I guess you call them. And then uh, that has a different look also because the pieces kind of are different, have a different look. So that's kind of enough of, enough of the gold. So what I'll do now, I also use some variegated um, uh, pieces of leafing which have some designs in them. There's some right over here. Almost look like brush strokes. And now, putting the silver on. The silver, obviously, the silver is going to attach wherever I didn't put the gold. So wherever the leafing is, is where the leafing, wherever, I'm sorry, wherever the sizing is, is where the leafing is going to stick. Okay, I'm going to come back to this, and I am going to put some paint on it. Um, I'm going to walk around a little with the paintings before I do that. Um, talk to you about those. Uh, this will get brushed down. It has to get brushed down really well. Um, all the extra little pieces um, right. that we actually find all over the house. There's a so. question that came in <clears throat> from Chase and Galleries. Imagine that. Hi, Chase and Galleries. Chase, uh, Joanne, how did you start using all these different techniques? Wow. Did you discover them by yourself or by experimenting? Both. Both. Um, the wonderful thing that my granddaughters do right now is that everything in the world is on YouTube. If you want to learn to do whatever, you can look up gold leaf and you can find exactly how to do it. Um, I didn't have that luxury all these years I've been painting. Um, I would say that a lot of it is experiment. I did take those uh, many workshops at the art center and um, it was with a lot of artists who all came in with different ideas. We did not just do um, an artist network, so to speak, was um, a great way to do that and everyone from that class has done some different things with paper making and other things we learned we learned there. So it um, comes, comes from a little bit of everything and a lot of it is experimental, there's no question about it. Especially once I started using it, I kind of wanted to put different, uh, different, use some different kinds, some kinds in there. So I am gonna come back, I'm gonna flip this around because you're seeing the bottom and then I'll have the bottom here. And uh, I'm going to, uh, talk to you about some of the paintings that are up and um, see how, where we go from there. So, And you while you're walking over, I'm going to tell you some other people who are saying hello and, hello and who are on. Chris, Christian Mackey just uh, got on, said hello. Um, uh, let's see. Um, okay. Christine White, uh, Robert Spalterholtz, uh, Kathy Grant. Oh, that's great. Okay. Yeah. I think okay. there's another question. Hold on. Okay. Um, Chase and Galleries, to all of our wonderful viewers out there, if you have any questions, please drop them into chat. Excellent. So he's doing that. Okay. Um, so I have a lot to say. So, so I, uh, we'll see how we <laughs> go with that. I might end up answering your questions before you ask them. So, because I kind of know, Jeff and I talked about it, I kind of know what you're going to ask. Maybe I'm not a mind reader, but maybe so. So. I talked to be. I talked about um, the paper that I had put the gold on the. And th these are a couple of the pieces right here. Um, if you want to zoom in a little, Rick. Um, this piece is um, called "Art in the Life of Mankind." Um, it was at the title on um, this one was actually taken from. It's from a, an art history book, and it actually says "Art in the Life of Mankind." Um, uh, I use a lot of um, besides the handmade papers and pieces of canvas. Um, I do use a lot of things from newspapers and magazines and all. Um, I will tell you that they are permanent. Once they're down on the canvas, um, they are covered in a polymer. And all my canvases are covered in two layers of lacquer when they're finished. 
Um, so, so art in the life of mankind is more of one of my more abstract landscapes. Um, my theme for so many years has been the horizon. So, in an abstract piece, you're certainly I know I know your eye is going to go here, which is where it should go. Um, but that horizon could be anywhere for you. It could be. Um, this could be a waterfall, this could be a cavern, um, it's, it's an expression, it's what was happening that day when I was painting. So this as a more abstract um, feeling, uh, and then I'm going to move down to, I kind of put these four pieces together because they're going to show you um, a lot of the different blues. Um, our gallery, um, Andrew's gallery in uh, Sarasota, uh, we sell a lot of paintings with blue, obviously, because it's on the beautiful west coast of Florida, and uh, people there, uh, that's why they're there, to be near the Gulf. Um, this is called Walking on Sunshine. It's 40 by 60 inches, just to give you an idea of its size. And um, I, was I was loving working with the aqua, my favorite color, um, and Rick, you might you can probably do that on there, right? You can make it come, come into the, to the collages because there's a lot going on here that you wouldn't normally see um, from even a few feet away. Um, studies that I've done that go on there. This is part of my uh, handmade paper, uh, as is over here on this side. Splashing and, and, and dripping, and I use a lot of inks and um, a lot of metallic um, uh, paints. Um, the title for this came when I found this piece of collage that had to go there, and of course reminds me of sunshine, but um, I'll give away a secret, it's actually a peach. <laughs> it was on, um, it was somewhere in my, I have drawers and drawers of, of papers that I used, and uh, the shape of it and the the um, the circular area and everything it had to go there. Um, I also talked to a friend that thought it looked like a hot air balloon. So um, go for it if it looks like a hot hot air balloon. That's 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 also great. This it, in here is all the gold and silver leaf. Okay, so when when I want the gold and silver to stay exactly the gold and silver, I spray it. Uh, with fixative because when I put the lacquer on the lacquer uh, sometimes will darken it change its color um, different companies that make the gold leaf uh, some of the um, areas will turn green almost like the Statue of Liberty kind of thing uh, and other times it'll just darken it so um, sometimes when I'm doing a painting and I'm not sure where it's really finished I'll put the first coat of lacquer on it and let it dry and see what comes up. That's really fun because um, please, the part, parts that I thought weren't really prominent enough will come out and, and it'll be okay, I think I'm finished. Or then uh, with only one um, layer of lacquer, I can put uh, my other colors in and I can add some things that I think I'd like to have. So um, the next two pieces, these, these four pieces being the blue, but the next two pieces, uh, I wanna, talk about over here. These two pieces, the one on the right is Tranquility and the one on the left is A New Beginning. Tranquility and A New Beginning are exactly the same size, 42 high by 34 wide. But use your imagination a little bit and I think you'll realize that all the deeper, rich colors that are in here Complement definitely the one on the left, which has a lot of more subtle areas and almost foggy, um, wispy areas. And to me, it would be interesting to hear if people want to write in the chat which they think looks larger. To me, the one on the right does. And I think it's because of the concentration of color, but I'm not sure. Which almost, uh, I don't know, Rick, what do you think? That's <laughs> what I would say. You would say, you would yep. say? Okay. Here's those uh, papers again that I've, um, that I've done the edge with the gold and then that green comes up. When it soaks into the paper um, with the, from the water on the brush, it'll do that. 
Uh, okay, this one um, is one of the newest pieces. I think they've had it online already. It is on the Chasen site. Actually, all the pieces I'm showing you are on the uh, ChasenGalleries.com uh, on the website. Um, this one is called Dance to a Moment in Time. Um, we vacation very gratefully uh, for a few weeks uh, each year on the west coast of Florida and uh, this is what I see. So it is obviously water. It's a much more realistic look than, uh, than the first abstract I showed you, but it's still an abstracted kind of, in an abstracted kind of way, meaning that I'm sure there are people that uh, love Bermuda and have visions that that's what it looked like and 4,000 other places and maybe more of places that have a beach and have water. So, so just showing you the difference in the four blues, we've got, we've got a few different ones here. Uh, there's the aqua, there's even uh, some of the blues on top um, for you artists who are watching, um, uh, a mixture of actually Payne's gray and blue, and um, it gives it that much softer uh, area rather than um, more to the aquas. And we'll move on. Uh, uh, oh, no, it's just Jason making an announcement. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> um, okay. Um, this year's language. 40 by 60 inches. Um, the reason I'm, I'm showing you this, uh, besides that it's a new piece, is that the palette, of course, is completely different. And what's really different about it from actually everything I've showed you is that the horizon in here is so muted that you cannot tell where the sky ends, where the land begins, or the water, could be water. Um, and that's what I liked about this one. It's uh, maybe you could really pull right in, Rick, on some of the. Um, here's the a lot of the uh, paper in here on both sides. That's the paper that I just showed you how I draw through. I'm taking a drink of water. And by the way, Joanne, everybody thinks over there that the painting on the right looks bigger. Hmm. Nick Ionello. You're with me on that one. Yep. Okay. Nick Ionello said that. Sue okay. Cook said that. Okay. Excellent. And oh, Chase and Gallery said, I would agree, one on the right looks bigger. Okay, there we go. All right, it's a, it's a deal. Such a deal. Okay, so we're back over um, to the back of the studio. This is actually where the stairs are. the downstairs. This is called, this one's called White Rain. Uh, it's 44 by 22 inches. And um, what I like about this one is it's contrast. There is so much light against so much dark um, and kind of a rainbow deal in here. You know, we're going, I guess if this were over here in the red, whatever, and the little bit of purple. Um, uh, there's some uh, handmade paper in here, which I did not do. Some of my handmade paper, um, a lot of it um, is not handmade by me. Uh, it's Japanese, a lot, a lot of these beautiful papers are made in Japan and um, I get those through the art supply. Uh, this one is 44, 40, excuse me, 48 by 48. It's called Sunrise Sunset. Um, oh, sorry. I have to get Rick in the right spot. There he is. Okay, good. <laughs> Cameraman needs room. There you go. Um, I meant to say, when I was at that first painting, uh, Art and the Life of Mankind, um, there were some squares here and there. This one, and, and when I put those squares of canvas in there, somewhat more often in the um, abstract pieces, they remind me of um, an urban area rather than, uh, and not always, but, uh, but buildings. It could be buildings. Um, sunrise, sunset could be either, but I do think that a lot of this would replicate um, maybe uh, next to a park or uh, uh, buildings that are kind of to the side of where you're walking in a, in a field or, or whatever. Um, also, they could represent things to a lot of different people, so I don't really want to have to say to you for sure. Um, could you come in on some of this? This one is really um, got a lot, a lot, a lot of texture in it. I had a lot of fun with the, this series. 
Um, I had some, uh, some drippy stuff that was painted over. And there are many, many, many layers on all of the paintings. Some have more than others. Um, I'll explain that a little when I show you when I'm doing the work over at the uh, table. Um, over here, where the lights are, I'm gonna find the right ones here. Um, over here, yeah, right <laughs> where the lights are. Um, these two paintings um, have already come off the stretchers. So um, on the, the ones that are on the stretchers have a, have a black edge, like you can see on White Rain over there. You can see the black edge. So obviously, this part goes to the side. Okay. Um, this is the way they're, um, they're stored when they come off the stretchers. And this is the way um, I roll. This is from here where I roll them up and they are sent out to the galleries from here. And then they're restretched when, uh, when they get down to, down or up to where they're going. Um, this one is um, Light of Day, um, 60 by 40, um, a little bit bigger than that first one that we saw. And um, this one is called Color Cocktail, 34 by 42 inches. Um, there's, there's some of what I was talking about with the squares of, of different um, pieces of canvas um, that remind me a little more of buildings, but could be a lot of, uh, a lot of other things. If any of you um, who are watching have an idea of what something means to you, we would, I would love to hear it. Um, if there's a particular um, piece that you saw, something of a place where you've been, I'd love to hear that. Um, I'm gonna swing around, Rick, to the back here. Thank you. Um, Sorry over here, about the I've just done a series of um, work on paper. There's just one of them out here. Everything else you, you're, that I'm showing you is on canvas. This was on paper. It is fun to work on a different medium. Um, the 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 paper takes the paint a little differently, and uh, uh, it's just more like a watercolor. I started out years, years, years ago. Um, when I was first exhibiting, it was all watercolor. So uh, that's probably why, why, why I went to why I went to um, acrylic because it's water based. Um, okay, what's the question? So Chasing Galleries wrote great colors on these. Do you have ideas in mind when you start uh, one of these pieces okay so because they're um because they're, they're always i always seem to keep going back to the um to the horizon uh i usually can start yeah you want to come over here That's yeah good. i usually can start with um when i start with those collage pieces it kind of gets the thing going and um if i'm starting from one edge to the other I can, um, I can uh, kind of see, okay, this part is up here and how am I going to use the space and um, more will go down to the bottom. Um, I don't think that's answering the question. Maybe the question is, do I, do I know ahead of time? Maybe is it going to be more abstract or more of the oh, okay. realistic? Maybe um, that's part yeah, of the question. Like, okay, this piece is uh, called Easy Street. Okay, um, I have it out and available here because first of all, the palette is very different, which um, I wanted to show. Secondly, because uh, my, bro my brother's um, beautiful acres up in Vermont, there's a sign at the front off the dirt road that says Easy Street. And when it, sometimes when I just finish something, I just know that's what it should be. Now. This is not uh, acres in Vermont. This could be something for a lot of different people. And when I started it, I didn't know what I was going to call it. But there are areas in this that move to that work together. So I know that was going to be an abstract because of the way of the more um, uh, bold pieces, especially the rectangular shapes and the squares. There, there is some. Um, can you get down here? There are some um, pieces of um, probably from an art book. There's some tree in there, and uh, I tear up a lot of old books. I uh, I went to a lot of um, used bookstores years back and collected a whole bunch of stuff that I 
tear apart. I don't know if the people there would have been I have another happy, question but... for you. Yeah. Jill Campbell wrote, do you have a particular glue you use for, for collating that you prefer? For collating, for collaging? Collaging, I guess. Um, I use a polymer emulsion, yes. Uh, matte medium or, or gloss medium is called. Okay. Uh, Golden makes it, yeah. Yep. Okay. And Sue Anello said, great job, Rick. <laughs> oh, I love it. Rick gets it, okay. Rick That's gets good. a Rick gets a kudo. Good. Rick gets a kudo. That's good. Um, I wanted to show you this piece. Um, it is called Silent Waters. Um, and the reason it's a little bit different is the palette is definitely different. This is a yellow uh, oxide that's mixed in with a Payne's gray, and that's where you get that real subtle, the green is so subtle in this, um, but it gives it a really nice richness. And I also um, have replicated some of the way I used to do water, that I would do a polymer in with the paint, and it kind of drags the paint along. Here's a lot of my um, uh, uh, handmade paper that's all up in, in this part. This is the uh, gold and silver leaf. This was covered with um, some uh, uh, acrylic. It's covered with a little bit of white, probably some beigey colors in there. And there's, and so some of it is showing through and some isn't. Um, it's really fun to work with it because it never really looks like it does, that gold and silver leaf um, from when I first put it on. Um, I always can manipulate it some way. There's a couple small paintings down here that I'll just tell you about. Um, this one is called Party Hats, um, because that's what it looked like to me. Um, but it certainly could also be a landscape. Um, got some bad color. I hope it's not coming out that way. From Well, I think it's just the light. Yeah. Uh, it might be the light over here. Yeah, whatever. We're a little bit in the not as bright over here. Yeah. Um, uh, these, these pieces were on the... Um, is it better if I can hold these up? No, they're fine. These pieces were, I could put them over there too. They're fine. Here. Uh, yikes. Like, um, these pieces were on the, um, on the invitation, uh, Vivid Life. This one is called Cloud Like. Here's where I had some of that gold leaf that has the uh, variegation in it. Wait, wait. Right there. Ah, that's better on a hand. Hold it up. Yeah. Okay. Good. That's good. And then I think there was one other one. Um, this one, Break in the Clouds, which I think a number of people um, actually uh, commented on when it was online because this uh, this is a different palette also, which is um, fun to do. It's a little bit, a little bit different. Okay. I am going to go over to the table and I'm gonna show you a little bit about starting the paint. How's our time? Are we running? Okay, good. I don't know. I think our time no, is okay. I think yep. we're good. I think people are still, we have, still with me. Are you still with me? That's good. We have 39 people watching. Okay. Left? Okay. Well, we're going to have them hang on for a little longer. Good. Okay, that's good. So, so um, it's time for paint here. Uh, you're you're going to find out that I, um, what I'm doing in the beginning is, is really just um, the first layer. There's really not a lot of uh, composition that's going on quite yet. Um, that's already, some of it's been taken care of from the, um, the collage pieces that I put on. So, let me start with a little bit of yellow green with the blue shade. And yes, I do like they have to be covered. I bet you never um, knew out there that this was finger painting. <laughs> finger painting. <laughs> um, I don't always. I um, um, I use uh, brushes also, but sometimes it's uh, with this surface, it's better. Um, I have found it's better to start this way. Hi, Mark. Mark Cage just said hi. Oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> okay. I'm getting an idea of this. Uh, this also 
it's going to be, it's going to catch in all the right places with that, um, with that molding paste. Um, if I add a little bit of the blue with the green. Show that again, please. Just with your fingers. I didn't have the camera on. That's okay. The mixing. It's okay. I'm down here. I'm okay. Good. I know that um, someone out there has the question of how I'm inspired, and I wanted to tell you that the answer, because I've asked, I've been asked it so many times, um, it's really what inspires an artist is their life. It's um, it's very strange, but I feel like I see things uh, differently. I don't mean that's bad. That what other people see is bad, and I don't mean what I see is perfect. But um, I'll be walking down the street and I will um, notice that the colors of the grass, there's different areas that are different shades of green. They're not just uh, one single color. Or I'll be in the city and seeing uh, uh, buildings and the light is hitting one side of a building and it looks a little pinkish and another one, and, it, and I, see it, I see a composition. It's very, su it's very subtle, and it's very su uh, uh, not a conscious thing. It's just there. Um, it also, I never come downstairs uh, not wanting to do something. You know, I, I, I need to be here, and I need to keep working, and, uh, and that's, I guess, part of inspiration, is just I'm here, and I'm and I'm doing what I'm doing. So, uh, inspiration is a good thing, but it doesn't. I was explaining it to somebody that it's not like the clouds open up and a big uh, ray of something comes down, and I go wow because there's uh, a lot of days that things don't really work out the way you think they're going to work out. I have a very nice comment from your old buddy Jim Rohner. Hi, Jim. And one of my golf buddies. Still here, have always enjoyed your work. Really interesting to see how you think to get the finished painting. This is like taking an art lesson. Mm. And he said, you're both doing great. <laughs> so there you are. That's perfect. So I, um, a few years back, I had a, um, I just want to see if there's anything else I wanted to make sure to tell you guys. Um, uh, the other question that I get asked the most how long does it take you to do a painting? When somebody picks up a paintbrush and they put the paint down for the first time, every time they paint, another time they paint, something's gonna change, something's gonna be a little bit different. Um, and they're gonna learn from what they put on the first time. They're gonna learn that, you know, if I put that color next to that one, I really kind of liked it. So I think I'll try that again. Might be some con subconscious also. So over, so if you decide that you're doing that and, and, and you're trying to learn and you're taking lessons and, and you're working toward being an artist, you keep moving on and you keep changing. Each time you do a painting, that painting leads to the next one. And so when you see a painting that I've done in 2020, what you see is everything I have learned since the first time I started. Because I only got to that place. I never did that the first day. I only got to that place because of all those different times that I had terrible errors and wanted to throw it away. But I kept going, and this is what happened, and something got a little better, or something got a little different. So that's my answer. To that. I um, had a really wonderful thing happen a few years ago. Uh, I was uh, alumni of the year from my uh, high school back here in New Jersey, and I gave a speech about my work, and I was going to read you a part of it because it talks about how I feel about people buying my work. I try not to judge myself or my work through the eyes of someone else. There are those who, who will love it and those who might think it's just okay. Diversity is thought in thought is what makes the world go round. 
treasure my work and I'm your friend forever. But if you don't, I'm all right with that because it's the best I could do at that point in time. And if it leaves my studio, you know what I think is true reflection of what I was trying to say with the chosen materials of the day and time in my life as well as my career. I read, read once that you can't make everyone happy. You are not pizza. I try to take nothing for granted and accept each day and each opportunity as it comes. I admit I have an abundance of good fortune and happy days, but my life is certainly not perfect. We all have days that we are unsure of ourselves or the decisions that we make. If grateful for what it is, however, the day can be transformed. I prefer joyful confidence, even when I have to really push myself to get there. We all have unique talents and gifts. Not all are artists, but we are all creators. We can all show the world our magic because everyone possesses it, possesses it in one way or another. And if there's no more questions, I think we're pretty much... I, I want to read you one comment that okay. just came in from right. Jill Campbell. Okay, hi Jill. This is from Down Under. Having followed your work since I saw a poster at the Crown Street Women's Hospital in Sydney... When my first grandson was born 17 years ago, this has been so inspiring. Oh, what a way to end it. And Jason Gallery said, great, insightful answers to those common questions. Thanks, Joanne. Okay, thanks, everybody. If we can figure out how to get off, we're in really good shape. <laughs> I think I, ha I have to hit the finish button. And hi, Laura. <laughs> Laura McGimsey just there came on. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Jason. All good stuff. Thanks a lot. JasonGalleries.com.